Okay, so I wanted to do an update video on PinOS um, because PinOS is excellent and uh, it recently got USB support and uh, now it runs from literally just an SSD drive uh, and you can run all your operating systems and the boot partition, everything from this drive. Setup is super easy. Um, but when I made my previous video, about a week ago or so now, uh, I did a, a not booting fix video. Uh, and it turns out that pretty much everything needs the fix. Uh, the only thing that worked straight off the bat was Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit beta. Everything else, you need to apply the 14 files to the boot folder. And so I'll show you how to do that, and I'll, I'll have a little play around with it because it is, uh, it's an amazing operating system, and, and now I've got it running really well. I've fixed every single image apart from one. A little update on, on what I'm using as my kit. So you might have seen my video on my new case. Uh, because I've moved my Pi 4 original into this case, I now have this case, uh, which was a very cheap Amazon case, but a little bit noisy. Uh, I've now put my Pi Moroni fan shim inside it. To do that, I needed to break the case a little bit. Uh, and so I've created this little tiny window. Because it's all modular though, uh, you can just take it apart, take off all the layers, I put the Pimerelli fan shim, it just slot, literally slots on top. Uh, and now I've got a really nice solution for my eight gig. Uh, my other four gig is just in this uh, very cheap case with a bit of a noisy fan. So what I might do is the fan that came out of here, I might pop into this case. Although I do have another couple of fans I haven't tried out yet that I bought cheap. But I also had the idea of uh, calling this. Now, to be fair, I had this on pretty much all day yesterday, uh, and one of my OS's was overclocked at 2200, and uh, and it was absolutely fine. But if I want to play a lot of gaming for, for a long period of time, maybe I was thinking about just putting a, well, either getting just a USB fan to, uh, you know, you can get these ones that curl over and, and can just basically push air onto the top, or I could literally pop something like that on uh, and it's either gonna push air in, well in this case I think it's probably better to pull the air away, uh, although these two work in the opposite directions. But uh, anyway, so that's that's cases and fans. Uh, I also have, uh, this is a new SATA cable, uh, which I had the suggestion from uh, Barry Rogers on, on my YouTube comments said this was a very fast cable and uh, looks like it tests faster than some others. I'll put a link in the description to it on Amazon, but I'm gonna use it for this test today. I'll probably do a speed test on it, comparing it to this J Micron one, which was from Amazon, and my uh, Dynamo one, which I've had for ages. I've got two of these now. So let's boot up pin and show you what happened. So I've left an SD card in there uh, because DOSPIN isn't on pin. Uh, so I'll just eject that SD card if I let's show this because in one of my other, other videos I was talking about uh, taking out an SD card and I have a technique now of how to get it out so shut that down you just go upwards and pull out and you can see it comes out super easy uh, it was something that uh, I thought you needed tweezers because it said so in the manual but I've, I've taken SD card, all, all day yesterday I was taking in and out SD cards. Right, so let's restart that and we'll, quick, we'll switch to screen capture in a minute. So this is just, just the SSD drive uh, using this new cable. Uh, and I guess I can test compatibility because I've got loads of OS's on here now. It will come up with whatever I was last on. Now one of them I haven't altered. So let's try and boot, I'll show you what the issue is. So Raspberry X I did, N-spawned, right, so I haven't used this one yet. So let's boot that one and I'll show you what happens. And then maybe I have done N-spawn. Oh no, it turns out I have done N-spawn. Uh, so let's shut that down and restart. So maybe it's Raspberry X that I didn't do, the one at the bottom here, so let's boot that one. That's what I wanted. This hasn't been updated yet, so what I'm gonna do is switch to screen capture and I'm gonna boot into another OS so that I can apply the fix. Okay, so you can see that it's coming up with the, the error, the USB error that you get with lots of operating systems. 
uh, and uh, Pin OS is no exception when you're doing solely USB boot. So I'm running just from this SSD drive. So let's shut that down. And this time I'm going to boot from Raspberry Pi OS. Okay, so you can see what it looks like if you have multiple operating systems on Pin OS uh, in Raspbian. Uh, it obviously shows all of the drives. Now you don't need to have it showing all the drives if you go to desktop preferences and uh, mounted disks, you can turn that off if you don't want to see that. You still have access to the disks, but it just means that they're not cluttering up your desktop. But for the purpose of this, I need to see it because I want to put these 14 USB boot files uh, into the boot folder of Raspbex uh, because that's the one that hasn't been fixed yet. So everything else has been patched with doing this exact same process. So none of the apps have worked on USB without this process apart from Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit beta. Handily, the Raspbex uh, folder, the boot folder, is actually called boot underscore Raspbex. So if I open that up, that's where I need to drag those files. Uh, some of the others, I had to do a bit, of, a bit of trial and error to work out what the boot folder was called. And it looks like, you can see here, there's one called boot, there's one called boot zero, and there's one called boot one. So boot zero was uh, Diet Pi, uh, boot was RetroPie. Batacera doesn't have a boot file, it's actually in this Batacera file. So you had to drag the 14 files into here, which was a weird one. Everything else had its own, uh, it has a root and a boot folder. So root is where the operating system is, boot is where the bootloader is, so uh, it, that's where you need to apply the patch. So let's drag this in, so I can click on here and do Control A, and then drag it into this folder, and then I click Apply this option to all existing files, and overwrite. There you go. And I've put which folder uh, was named uh, in the description of the video, and I've also put any passwords I came across that I needed in the description in the video. So it just means it helps you out if you're installing one of these operating systems. When you get to that point, have a look at my video, have a look at the description, it will show you the password, and also the name of the boot folder, if it was unique. So in the case of the boot, the boot zero and the boot one, they weren't unique, but gen was for uh, Gen 264, which is handy. Uh, Raspbex is clearly labelled, um, and NS64 would have been NSpawn64. So it's it's easy enough to do once you know which one's which. Or you could just drag these 14 files into everything that says boot. That would also pretty much do the same. Right. So let's close that down. Close that down. So now I need to boot up Raspbex. So let's reboot. Here we are, and here's the menu just to show you everything's installed. So I've got Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, I've got Batacera, which is a multi-game emulator system, RetroPie, which is also a multi-game emulator system, uh, Gen 264, Nspawn 64, DiaPi, Debian 64, which needs um, a, a graphical user interface. It's, it just boots into the, the prompt, so I need to have a look at that in a separate video. Uh, so let's try Raspbex. Uh, I'm not sure how this will work because it is an Ubuntu one and I've had trouble with USB boot on some other Ubuntu system. So uh, let's click that and click boot and cross our fingers. Okay, so I don't know the login for Raspbex, so I'm going to have to look that up. Nice little login screen though. So it looks like you can log in as root. Yeah, so root and root is the login for that. I'll just add that to my note. So this is a different looking operating system. Accessories. Debian, games, toys, O'Clock, doesn't sound like a game, screen, I'll probably go back through and have a look at this. Okay, so it shows that the fix works, so I applied that fix to every single OS that I listed out just now, apart from Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit, and this is only when you're running everything from a USB, so you're running the boot and the operating system from the USB. Uh, and it works really, really well. So let's boot into something else. So reboot. Okay, so back on the login screen. Let's go for RetroPy this time. There you go. So RetroPy starts up nice and quick. I've just copied a few games in. Actually, 
Copying games into RetroPie is super easy in this operating system, and I'll show you why. Uh, because it's all on the one SSD drive, and each operating system can see the other, uh, it's, it's super easy. So I'll just very quickly play a little bit of Tetris. And this is a great version of Tetris, works really well, really responsive. There you go, so you can see that works. So if I press start, uh, press start and select together, I can then quit out of that and just do uh, restart system and that will take me back to the pin OS. So let's boot back into Raspberry OS 64 bit because it's an operating system I'm used to. Okay, so that's all booted up. So then all you need to do is find the RetroPy folder, uh, which is this one, open it up, go to home, Pi, RetroPy, and ROMs. And you can see these are the ROM folders that RetroPy automatically generated uh, in the RetroPy folder. Uh, and if I go into Game Boy, you can see I've got Tetris World in there. Uh, and so I can either download that from the internet or I can put a USB stick and copy it in. But it's because it's all on the same SSD drive, it just makes it super easy. So I put some in Game Boy Advance as well. And I played a little bit of that, so that must be a save file, I guess. Yeah. Right, so let's just show you Batter Sarah. Uh, right, log out, reboot. So click on Batter Sarah, click on boot. And so I haven't put any games in this, so this actually comes with some games in. And funny enough, on Batter Sarah, although it looks like Ratchapai, the A and the B are reversed, so it's A to select something. So you can see Super Mario Bros. and the Great Guiana Sisters, Game Boy Advance, Space Twins, Mega Drive, Old Towers, NES, 2048, PC Engine, Reflectron and Santa Lantian, Super Nintendo, Donkey Kong Classic, and I'll go back to ports because I was going to show Quake. Uh, so we've got Doom, Mr. Boom and Quake and this runs pretty well. And this runs super fast, uh, and all the buttons and everything are configured really well. So we've got look up, look down with the triggers, we've got strafe with the other triggers, uh, and you can see it's, it's nice and smooth. Oh, there we go. So you can see it's super fast. Uh, I'm not quite used to the controls yet, um, but uh, but it is working very well. Oh, 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 still up. There you go. So hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.